a lot of times we often hear people ask questions like, why are people showing up at the polls? Why aren't more people invested in the voting process? Why don't people care about voting? These are good questions. These are important questions. And I think oftentimes we don't spend enough time on questions. In fact, we sometimes condemn people for having a lot of questions, but not having answers. I don't think that we could get all of the answers we need if we're not willing to ask all of the questions that need to be asked. Today, I want to share with you some questions that I have. These questions are to further develop a conversation about how we as a people can become more like a gumbo than a melting pot. I think a lot of the resistance that we're experiencing in the political landscape is a result of the residual impact of so many millions upon millions of people feeling like they have to conform, they have to blend, rather than being able to be their unique and authentic selves. See that gumbo that I was talking about just a moment ago? It is very important to Louisiana. It speaks of different cultures and communities and ethnic backgrounds coming together to create a dish where all of these different flavors and spices and herbs and ingredients can come together to complement one another without fully emerging themselves. They still get to stand out. The okri being the okri, the shrimp being the shrimp, the bay leaf being the bay leaf. And for those of us who are vegan, the ingredients may be different. But the point is, is that it does not have to completely dissipate. It does not have to conform and become uniform. They're allowed to stand apart, but settle together. And so the purpose of these questions is to begin a dialogue or a conversation that will inspire different energies, different personalities, different minds to come together and begin to answer the questions that can help us to collectively heal as a people and see more people invested in our politics and what guidance and leadership in our nation looks like moving forward. Question number one, why does the Constitution start off by saying we the people if the only people who wrote, signed, and made the agreement were wealthy Caucasian men? Question number two, how many people in America actually have a college education? Question number three, how many people in America are interested and invested in having a college education? Question number four, how many people in America are faced with literacy challenges? 
Question number five, how many Americans speak clear English? Question number six, how many people in America have ADHD? Question number seven, what percentage of the American population is in survival mode? Question number eight, how many people in America are navigating various degrees of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, mental illness, or may be on the spectrum? Question number nine, how many are coping with the dis-ease of disease, whether it is addictive behaviors, i.e. alcoholism or drug abuse, or it has been medically diagnosed? Question number 10, how many Americans possess felony convictions in states where felons are not allowed to vote. Question number 11, why are the two main voting parties dominated by Christians if church and state are not allowed to mix? Question number 12, who are voters who don't support the practice of monotheistic patriarchal sovereignty supposed to endorse if the goal is to elect officials that truly represent their best interest. Question number 13. If democracy is real, why is there an electoral college vote? Question number 14. Why in 2024 are there still nearly 20 states that have never even had a female governor? Question number 15. Why in 2024 has there never been a female president of the United States? Question number 16. Why if someone has paid their debt to society, can they still be banned from the voting process. Question number 17. What is the primary intention behind the voting process? Is it to protect its citizens, participants, liberties and freedoms, or is it to protect and strengthen the corporations of American industry. If you have more questions that you would like to add in the comment section, please do. These are my questions that I have to begin a conversation with people ready to talk about and discuss where are the voters? Where are the people who should be at the polls? Why are so many not invested in the voting process? If we really want the answers to those questions, if we're really concerned about why people aren't showing up, why people aren't invested in this process, let's, let's start to wrestle with the tough questions. Let's stop being told what we need to focus on. Let's remember that every tree has roots. And if the roots are not healed, if the roots are rotten, what can we expect from the tree? We light this candle in honor and acknowledgement of our ancestors, those whom our nation acknowledges and those whom our nation has chosen to erase. We uplift them. We call them into the space. We acknowledge all of their energy, their life force, what they gave and sacrificed 
for what they believed in. We hear the words, give me liberty or give me death. There were so many who met their physical death at the hands of our Founders Liberty. I honor all of them, the named and the unnamed, the spoken and the unspoken, the colonized and the free, the captured and the liberated, the colonized and the uncivilized, at least by society standards. I acknowledge all of you. Thank you for what you gave and what your energy and presence and imprint continues to give. As above, so below. As within, so without. Thank you, God Goddess. Thank you, God Goddess. A man, a woman, le lem, le la.